In this video, we're going to create our new portfolio for EDT 180 using Google Sites. We're going to publish it and get the share link. In other videos, we'll learn how to change the theme, add pages, and do various things to edit the site. So let's get started making our new Google Site. There are a few different ways to do this. If you're on any Google page that has the, the menu, the nine dot Google apps menu at the top right, click on that menu and select sites. This takes you to sites.google.com. So you could also just type in sites.google.com and that will take you to this page. Another way to create a new site is from your drive. If you are logged in or looking at your drive, click plus new in the top left corner. And then it doesn't show up in the main menu, so you have to click a roll over more. And once you've rolled over more, it lets you move your mouse over to Google Sites and then left click and select, select Google Sites. When you make a new site from your drive, it automatically makes your site for you. When you start from the site's home page, you also get to see this template gallery. And you can use a template. You are welcome to start from a template. The Help Center site that we have for this class use this Help Center template. The sample portfolio that is shared with you uses this club template, so you don't necessarily have to use a student portfolio template. But you could also just start with a blank one from scratch. It is totally your preference. If you wanted to hide this template gallery, because it's always here at the top, and these are just ready to use templates or your plus blank. The thing is, if you click the three dots, you can hide them. But I wanted to mention this because once you hide them, it's a little, it's not obvious how to get them back. So once you've hidden them and then you say, oh, but I do want to use a template or I do want to make a new site, you have to go to the three lines at the top left where it says main menu and then select settings. And then check where it says templates, display recent templates on home screens, and then click OK. And my templates are back and my start a new site blank is back. So if I were to click here, the plus blank, it would do exactly the same thing as going to drive and clicking plus new site did. It makes this brand new blank template from scratch. In another video, we'll talk about how to change the theme and personalize it. But for now, we're just going to give this a name. That's our first step where it says untitled site. I'm going to use my name, I'm going to use my last name. I'm just going to call this Lance Portfolio. Have your name somewhere in it for sure. And then notice when I clicked out of it, it automatically put the same name in the top left. So it named it for me here. This editable site that we're looking at right now is only viewable by me. It is private to me. And this is where I edit and make changes. This, there's a link at the very top in the address bar. This is not the link that I will share in order for other people to see it. I actually will publish this editable version of the site and then I'll get a separate published site link. Right now it's gray. And when I roll over it, it says can't copy link for unpublished site. So I have to publish it first. And once I've published it, it's not final. I can keep republishing as many times as I want. Every time I make a change here where I'm editing and I click publish, it makes changes to my finished website, which is at a different website address. So the first thing I'm going to do after I've named my site is click the publish button at the top right. And it automatically made the web address the same as the name that I gave my site. And that is fine. You can leave it at that. The important thing is that you need to click where it says manage. 
it defaults to be anyone at Arizona State University can view my site. And this is where you have a decision to make. We recommend that you change this so that anybody with the link can view. The reason is because that will allow you to test your site in an incognito window, which is a separate browsing window that you are not logged into. So you can see your site the way visitors besides you, like the way your instructor will see it, and make sure that your instructor can see your website and see all the assignments, all the information that you're going to add to your website. So it's a nice way to check. I always check websites before uh, I share them to make sure that they can be viewable in an incognito window. Because when I'm logged in as me, I can see everything. But if I'm sharing something, I need to make sure that other people can see it too. So that's why we recommend you do anyone can view. If, if you click manage, the very first thing and the cursor blinks at you, it says add people in groups here. You are not going to share these with specific people. Uh, this would be if you were working on a website collaboratively with other people, you might want to add them as editors, but we're not for this course. What we need to do is click in the bottom section where it says links and click change. Now it tells us that this draft is restricted. The draft is our editable area here and we want to keep that restricted. That, so that stays the way it is. Where it says publish site Arizona State University. Right now anybody at ASU would be able to find it and open it and view it. We want to change that to public. Now, if you truly do not want to change it to public, you are concerned about your privacy, totally understand, you can do that. You can leave it set to Arizona State University. Just be aware you will not be able to check it in an incognito window if you try to look at it in an incognito window where you are not logged into your ASU account. It will just prompt you to log in to your ASU account to see it. So that's the decision to make right now. It's totally yours to make. I'm going to show you how to make it public. Notice the draft is still restricted. I don't want anybody else to be able to edit my draft. But the published site is public. Anyone on the internet can find and open. I'm going to click Done. Now, this part I want to point out to you because notice that I chose anyone on the internet can find and open. But before I click this Publish button, I have this nice option here under Search Settings. Request public search engines do not to not display my site. I like to check that for this type of situation. This is, again, your choice. If you would like people to be able to search your name and possibly find you, you can leave that unchecked. Uh, when I make websites that I want to easily be found publicly, like if you were using Google Sites for a business website, you would want public search engines to find you. But for this, you might not want to. So click the box and then click Publish. It tells me that my site has been published successfully. And if I click the View button pretty quickly, I've noticed it goes away if I don't click View right away. Um, I can actually open up and see what my site looks like published, which is pretty cool. I'm going to close that tab and go back to my editable draft. I have published it, and now because I've published it, when I roll over the little link icon at the top, I get the Copy Publish Site Link option. So this is how I get my link to share when I submit my assignment on Canvas. I'm going to click Copy Publish Site Link, and there's my link, and then I have to click the Copy Link button. And at the bottom it says Link Copy to Clipboard. That means it is saved on my clipboard, and now I can open up my Canvas assignment and paste it into Submit. But this is my home page, and obviously I'm not done with it. I need to add a title, I need to add pages and a theme. We'll do that in some separate videos.